Hey guys, it's Taras again. Figured I'd do another video and show you how our solar system set up. We've gone so far through three different systems, partially because of the mistakes that I have made and partially the products have failed. So I'll show you the system that we currently have and how it's set up. Casitas are not the easiest campers to set up solar on because of the way that the walls are set up, being it's a molded fiberglass camper, there is not that many places to go through on the roof. So it, I personally don't really like cutting holes through nice fiberglass. So it took a little bit of, a little bit of while to figure out which, uh, which direction to go with this. The nice thing is that our camper already had an access hole that was actually used for an old antenna for a TV that didn't work anyway, so I used that. So let's go and check out where that's mounted and how the wiring goes. So what this is, it's called an entry gland and you can buy them on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description. These take wires of different sizes. These ones are typical, can't remember the size of the wire, but this is typical for the solar installation for amperage for just, you know, 100 to 200 watts. So th these go inside and there's no dual, dual walls or anything like that in the casita. So it goes straight through into the cabinet over here and then it snakes across into the charge controller and I'll show you the location of that in a little bit here. So next I'll show you how the uh, solar panel is set up and what kind of a solar panel we're using. So there is the solar panel. This is a Renergy and it is a 100 watt panel. As I mentioned earlier, we've gone through a couple different reiterations of the solar system that we have. And this one in particular is hopefully the last one before we had flexible solar panels that were just stuck on a roof right here. There was actually two of them, so there was 200 watts. Now we only have a 100 watt panel. But those panels were having a lot of issues. Like you've probably seen some of the other people using them. They had some cupping issues and also they had overheating issues whenever we were somewhere where it was really hot. Uh, being that the, the cells on them are black, they get really, really hot and there is nowhere for the heat to escape if they're not even a little bit elevated, causing the solar panel to overheat and not produce the wattage that we were looking for. So in the end, after a bunch of different decisions and going back and forth, we decided that we were just gonna try using a glass panel. This, uh, this is a, a Renergy panel that is uh, it's 100 watts. It's a monocrystalline panel, so it's a little bit more expensive and supposed to be more efficient. It works great compared to the same setup we had with the flexible panels. This one produces uh, more wattage and more consistent current. Um, we, we like it a lot. The way that it's mounted is it's mounted on these um, as you can probably see right here on these uh, plastic feet. Uh, they are also, I think from Renogy, uh, but uh, I'll again have a link in the description. They're pretty cheap. They're I think $24 or $25, something like that. They come with six of them. So there's each uh, one on each corner and there's uh, one on each side. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to use the one on the sides because the roof of the camper is not perfectly flat as you would imagine. This is fiberglass, so it's got a little bit of a curvature to it. So uh, the panel was flexing really weirdly. So I just decided to keep four posts versus using all six. And so far it has not been an issue at all. It feels very, very solidly connected on there. The way that I connected, or the way that I I'd hired the these plastic feet is using VHB tape. It's a great product from 3M. And then uh, I put a little bit of silicone around the edges so the water doesn't get in it, get underneath it, which is pretty much the only thing that can um, make it stick less efficiently. So, so far they're not lifting up, holding really well, and we've been pretty happy. You can probably see the panel is a little bit tweaked so there's a little bit of strain on the glass I think potentially could cause an issue if they heat up too much or maybe if it's too cold and then Sun hits it and it might crack but uh, we'll have to uh, cross that bridge when whenever that happens but so far it's been all right 
So now let's go inside and I'll show you how the solar controller is set up. All right. So the way that we have the solar controller set up is in one of these cabinets. It's actually right at the bottom, right in here. And, uh, but let me show you first where the wires come in. So we go right over here, this above cabinet, and there is wiring right over here. So it comes out of the roof gland where I show you earlier, roof comes out of there, and then it snakes all the way across through here into this cabinet, all the way across down through here. So it comes down over here, down this area, underneath, by the back wall, there's a little wooden piece that um, covers all the wiring that comes stock with a camper. Also covers some of the PEX piping in here and down in this cabinet. So you open up the cabinet, you can see that blinking light. This is where the solar controller is. So the solar controller is by Victron. It has no display on it, uh, no ports aside from a port for expansion, which gives you a couple different options, including a Bluetooth adapter or a Bluetooth dongle, which is what you see blinking blue. The newer controllers come with Bluetooth built in. This one didn't, so that's an additional piece. So now you can buy this exact same controller with Bluetooth built in. The issue that we haven't run into, but there's definitely a problem with it, I would think, is that the controller is really far away from the solar panels. You want the controller to be as close as possible to the controller because of the loss of current. We are not really able to do that the way that I wanted to do it. I wanted to have the controller over here closer to the battery. The better way would have been is to probably keep it up in that cabinet and then run wires to the battery from here. The best way to do it is just to go as short of wires as possible, but casitas are just not an easy um, trailer to wire because there's not that many places to hide the wires. I didn't want wires to just be kind of, you know, sitting there. Uh, you know, I didn't want to pull the carpet back either. So this is the best solution I was able to find to put this solar controller. So this is this controller is awesome. Uh, the, the reason why I love it is because of the app that shows you all sorts of different information about how much wattage you're getting, how much current, how much volt, voltage, and it's all on the phone, so you don't even need to have any sort of display or um, have it sitting anywhere but in a cabinet, which is great, considering there's no other places I could have put it. So. Here in a second, I'll show you how the app works. And there's the app. You just pull up and it shows you which devices are available for you to connect to. And it says VE Direct Smart, which is the little Bluetooth dongle. I open it up and it connects pretty quickly. And right here, now it's showing you how much wattage the solar panel is producing. It tells you the voltage of the solar panel and the current, and then it tells you what state the battery is in. So right now it's an absorption state, telling you how much current it is receiving and what battery voltage um, it's showing. So considering right now this might not all be the numbers might not be totally correct because we are on shore power, so the Solar controller is probably working together with the charger inverter in the uh, power center that is connected to the shore power. So these numbers might not be exactly what they would have been if we were completely off grid. But that kind of gives you an idea of how the app works. Another really cool feature I like about it is the history. So if you click on that, it shows you over the 30 last days how much energy has been produced and all sorts of other information. And it's really, really cool because it shows you maximums and minimums and that kind of stuff. It's great to just for people who like uh, who like looking at numbers and you know data and stuff like that. I love looking at this 
um, the disinformation. And at this point, I forgot to tell you about where the wires end up coming from the controller, from the solar controller. Where do they go from there? Obviously, they need to get to the battery. So, casitas don't have the batteries inside because they're older. The batteries weren't really designed to be completely inside a coach because they needed to be vented. Now you can get AGM batteries, fully sealed batteries, you can get lithium batteries that do not need to be vented. So on a casita, the battery is located in an outdoor, kind of an outdoor storage right over there. And uh, from there, out of the controller, it goes into the storage through a little hole and a little grommet and uh, uh, through the fiberglass inside the battery compartment. So let me show you how all that's hooked up. Right, so let me open this up and give you a peek inside. Bunch of wires don't doesn't mean that it's all dangerous in there or whatnot. This is just an extra extra cord. This right here is a wiring harness for a ground deploy extra hundred watt solar panel we use. You probably think a hundred watts on top. That, what does that do? Two things. We have an extra hundred watt ground deploy with its own solar controller. This is wired straight to the battery through a fuse. So if we're in a place where the roof panel is not getting enough solar, we can always ground deploy. And I have to tell you that ground deploys are great because you can direct them to the sun and you can rotate them throughout the day and get the best amount of solar to, to them where if you have something rigidly mounted to the roof, you're unable to do that. So this is what this is. This is a, um, an SAE connector to a ground deploy that I can show you in a little bit here. But the way that the battery box set up is, you can see it in here. There is a, I think it's a group 27 battery. This is just a simple um, AGM battery. It's not, you know, lithium or anything like that, or even a gel battery. It works great. Um, I bought it used, so it's probably not uh, up to its full capacity, but it works. It didn't work for the last year. The wires are that are, that are coming out of this battery are ridiculously undersized. They are very, um, they're, they're barely good enough for the setup that we have, but they have never gotten warm and I've never had to run into an issue where they would um, they it would be a problem. But if I were to do this again, I'd probably use a little thicker wires, but they're totally fine. It's not even, it's not dangerous. They've never gotten warm or anything like that. I do have this all on a fuse right here. It's a, a sort of a fuse breaker. So if this ever goes over 30 amps, of draw like something like a runaway draw or something happening it will it will blow and the uh, battery will get disconnected so we don't have a fire in here um, also it this little fuse thing is great because you can just press the button and disconnect the whole system for uh, troubleshooting or if you're if we're putting it in storage uh, just in case we can disconnect this and uh, the, you know just in case something shorts or whatnot um, this is a great way to do this uh, in here, there is a little extra fuse box for expansion. Now in retrospect, I probably didn't need it because the new power center I installed a little while ago has a bunch of extra uh, 12 volt fuse connections. So I could have just gone in there, but it's nice to have this in here. We have one thing connected to it, which is our uh, LP gas sensor inside. So that's really the only thing that we have connected to this. There are um, posts over there, like a distribution post. So everything goes to that first. And then we only have two wires going to the battery. Uh, and, and also uh, this one right here for the ground deploy. But pretty simple setup. And here is the said ground deploy panel. These are really cool. They are also flexible, like what we used to use on the roof. Uh, they're super lightweight. Pretty sure these are 250 watt panels connected together to give you 100 watts. I will have a a link to where we got this. We got it on Amazon, and I think it was about $150, maybe a little bit more. It comes in its own little suitcase that is super lightweight, and with a little pouch. It does have a USB port and what's great is that it comes with MC4 connectors so you can connect all sorts of different things to it uh, You know in line with the system or uh, the way that I have it set up 
the way that it works here is that I have the MC4 connectors going into an SAE adapter. And then from there, it goes into this super, super cheap $13 charge controller that works with about 100 watts and no more. But it is ridiculously inexpensive and it's been working great. And from there, it goes into an adapter and into this watt meter. This thing is really great. It's, it, it shows you all sorts of interesting information from how much current is being um, produced by the solar panel to the voltage and wattage. It is a really awesome little thing and it's again only like 15 bucks or something like that on Amazon. So what I typically use it is just, just really, I don't care so much about the current or, or any other information. I'm really only interested in the voltage because that way I, uh, I can tell if the panel is facing um, the sun at the best possible way. So that is, that is what I look for. And then from here, it goes to another SE connector. Uh, and that's the connector that I have on the uh, that extension cord over there that I showed you earlier. The cool setup here is that I now have it plugged into my motorcycle, into the battery that I have wired up here. And this is my little USB charger for my phone. And it has an adapter right here for an SAE. And it all works seamlessly. So I can unplug this and I can use it either with my phone when I'm on a motorcycle or I have a little pump for tires so if I get stuck in the middle of nowhere with a you know with a, a tire pressure that needs to be increased then I can just unplug this plug in a pump and pump my tires up or I can use it for all sorts of different things this is a you know a typical 12 volt connection so but right now it's charging my bike and it works really really well thanks again for watching another video if you have any questions for us please let me know there's going to be another video i'm going to be working on in a little bit um, kind of talking about how to make your own super super simple ground deploy solar panel for really cheap um, it's much cheaper than majority of the panels that are being sold online with the controller the pieces you put all together it's super lightweight and easy to use and you can just throw it under your bed or you know in the bed of your truck and then when you need extra power you can just throw it on the ground and um, get the extra power so watch for that video probably happen in the next week or so thanks again and subscribe to the channel and i hope to see you again